Hello and welcome to, after a very long pause, another car video. And um, I'm going to make this another design process video where I go through what I do um, every day in order to create one of these models. So this is what I have so far for a another one of these hydro pneumatic Citroëns. I think I'm going to turn this into an XM model. Um, and so far what I have is some pneumatic suspension, anti-roll bars on the front and rear, and steering on the front axle. And let's see if I can demonstrate the suspension here. So if I pump this, it just has two cylinders, one front, one rear. It's nice and soft and spongy. And this is pretty cool, but really, um, I think I'm up for a bit more of a challenge. I want to make something more advanced. This doesn't have any drive because it's hard to make suspension that's driven, steered um, at this scale. But I think that's what I'm going to try to do here because, frankly, this was a bit too easy. This took me only a day. Well, after another long building session, here's what I've got. Um, it, the chassis has gotten two studs wider, which is not ideal, but I think it's still acceptable for this size of wheel. It's just on the edge. Um, and it now has drive through a differential and a set of universal and CV joints. It's a modified version of the suspension that I um, designed last year. Um, and it has steering, although the um, steering angle is pretty rubbish actually and it's a bit difficult to grab this at the moment but yeah that all works fine and what works really nicely is the new suspension which I can pump up and then here's a new feature I can actually lock it in place and I've got um, two separate channels for the front and rear suspension so that we don't get this kind of wailing motion that we used to get previously where the air from this pump would just go into the air of this one and we would be sort of oscillating between having stiff rear and stiff front suspension. Now the two systems are isolated and it works quite nicely. I've now stiffened the front part of the chassis here, which was a little bit floppy earlier, and obviously added in all of the power functions. And what's really surprising is that um, with the way that I've arranged it here, I've managed to actually leave a lot of space in here for an interior. I mean, if we move the battery box back, if we reposition uh, some of the pneumatics slightly, um, we could easily make a car that's remote control with an interior um, at this relatively small scale, which would be pretty amazing, honestly. But um, let me just show you some of the features. I'm using this uh, not official LEGO um, battery boxing controller here. Um, and what's nice is that this is both a battery box and receiver. Uh, in one, so that allows me to make much more compact things. But we've got steering, and we've got drive. And I mean, pretty basic, but it seems to work well. And there might even be space for a fake engine up here if I reroute the anti-roll bar. So a lot of potential here still. I've mounted the chassis on a sort of impromptu stand here in order to demonstrate the biggest mechanical change from last time, which is this V6 piston engine, a 90 degree V6, which is important. Um, and it's it's really small, really compact, and it fires quite quickly, which I'm, you know, I'm pretty happy about. But unfortunately, in the pursuit of implementing this V6 engine, I have had to make a decision. So originally, I wanted this to be a Citroen XM, but unfortunately, the XM has a transversely mounted four or six cylinder engine, um, which I just couldn't fit, especially because the XM's engine is in front of the front axle. So there would have to be some kind of engine here, and I would have to mount the drivetrain to the differential, and that just wasn't going to work. So instead, I've gone for a longitudinal V6 uh, and mounted it behind the front wheels, um, which just happens to be the configuration of another hydro pneumatic Citroën, which is the SM. The SM had a V6 90 degree Maserati uh, V6, so um, that's, uh, that's actually quite perfect. But actually, most of the effort that went into getting the chassis into its current state was not the piston engine, but all of the cable management and the kind of maximizing of space given all of the systems that we've got here. So I did my best to route electrical cables to the battery in the most compact way possible. This is all really flat here. And I've also um, routed the pneumatic systems into these tight little bundles of cables 
um, that are routed very carefully along the chassis in order to maximize interior space. So all of this is where the center console will be. Here, where it gets kind of wider, is where the rear seats will be, and then the battery is mounted in the trunk. I've now added a steering column connected up to the steering motor here in the front, and I can show you how that works here. So this really highlights one of the biggest problems with this model, right, is that just due to the limitation of the parts available at this scale, the steering angle is pretty terrible, lock to lock. But one advantage of that is that um, it means that I can package things really tightly around the wheel arch here. So this whole mechanism is quite close to the wheel, but it's never actually going to touch even at the maximum steering angle. And uh, that fits in really well with the general idea of this model, which is to keep everything really compact. And one other uh, thing that I've added here is just this beam, uh, which once again rotates with the steering. And I think I might be able to attach some kind of strings here to allow the headlights to move eventually. Um, and the final thing I worked on was just this rear suspension, the kind of the length of uh, these um, arms, uh, because that affects both the range of motion of the suspension as well as the stiffness compared to the length of this lever attached to the pneumatic actuator. I've now started creating a general framework for the bodywork, including opening doors and an opening rear hatch. Uh, and I think the overall shape is, is decent. I think you can really see the SM shape come into it. So if I drop the suspension and, and look at it from a low angle like this, like that profile is actually looking decent. And then I've also just been having fun with little details, covering up the engine so it now looks quite sleek. I've um, managed to r lower the height of this whole area uh, just a little bit. And then I've also added these uh, kind of suggestions of brake discs at the rear, not at the front because it had inboard brakes here. And um, yeah, I think it's going fairly well. I've now adjusted the rear suspension geometry slightly and fitted different wheels. But the big difference is here in the interior where I've you know, managed to put in some seats and I think that's a testament to how nicely packaged everything underneath is because, you know, it just looks like an interior there. You wouldn't really know that there's motors and pneumatics uh, underneath the seats in the center console. And the other thing that I did here was um, the swiveling headlights, which I'll now demonstrate. Which I think uh, is kind of different to how I usually do it, but with these half-wide beams here, I've managed to create a reasonably compact swiveling headlight system there. 